could you ever, ever imagine that you have around your home hanging bodies high up in the trees? That kids are searching for their friends? That family members are searching for their loved ones in mud? What, what happened there is so unbelievable, so, so tragical, so heartbreaking. So this is so much pain that it's way too much for just one life. And I only can imagine, I only can imagine how the people feel there. And I can completely understand why they are so angry against their government, because they are left alone and people are angry where are the taxes they are paying the whole life taxes and then when they need help they don't have enough money to help them for real so i i i can't feel you what happened in america make me really think a lot about natural disasters because most of the people most of the areas would have never problems with hurricanes. So they thought, no, we are landlocked. A hurricane will never reach us. But this is false. The hurricane reached them. And they had not enough time and not enough possibilities to prepare for this kind of natural disaster. And the government told them, leave, leave, leave because when you stay, you will die. So what happens next is that everyone is packing their belongings, the important stuff into their cars and trucks and try to reach the next road and just fly away. But what happened when so many people, millions are on the street? So the first one had an accident and they blocked the road. The second one uh, lost the engine and the truck had to stop. The roads are full, there is no movement and they, then they are more than unprotected because they are in the middle of nowhere with no shelter, only their cars. And so it also makes me think about how can everyone prepare for such a natural disaster. Das ist im wahrsten Sinne des Wortes katastrophal. Wenn Sie sich dafür entscheiden, in einem dieser Evakuierungsgebiete zu bleiben, werden Sie sterben. Stories like this are so, so unbelievable. A man was buried till his neck into mud. And when they reached him and tried to save him, he begged for, let me stay there, let me alone. Why? Because under him, was his wife and kids buried in mud and they was directly under him and it was possible to reach the feet of the father and they scratch it and try to hold it but three days before they find they found him the scratching stopped so he knows he lost his whole family he's left complete alone and fathers and mothers have this protecting instinct and when you know you was not able to protect your wife protect your kids and you should live and all of them are dead i can completely understand him why he don't want to live anymore i have no idea what happens next if if they saved him or not but yeah stories like this when you hear that it's so unbelievable the American people are angry because they say with our taxes, we pay with our taxes for wars that aren't ours. We pay for our taxes for migrants in our land that never have done anything for our land. And for all of that is enough money there. But if something really terrible happens to us, there is not enough money to help us and to get us into a better situation. And honestly, I can completely understand that thinking. So to imagine 
what really happened there. I want to show you now a picture above the earth, how huge this uh, hurricane was. And what this hurricane brings with it is not only storm, it brings also a big amount of water. There was so much rainwater that the first thing what happened was that the rivers are completely overfilled and they reach the ground around it. That landslides happen because it was so much rain that everything just swept away. Also swept away are most of the roads and towns, cities are complete cut off from everything else. And I saw pictures from old houses floating with people inside. Imagine that. If you are in there, you know that you will dead. You know you will be dead in a few moments. And there is no possible way out. And yeah, I show you also a video of the water, how huge it was, how fast it was, how angry and strong this water was. That you can imagine if it happened there, you have no possibility to come out of this. It's absolutely deathful. And it's coming in such a short time around your houses. The mudslides, the waterfalls that was never there before. And you are in, from one second to another surrounded by water. And also, when you saw this video of the school bus, how destroyed it is, how many trees are around it, you can only imagine how strong and powerful the water was. And what I can really not understand is that some people still have to go to work at these days. They know that the hurricanes are coming and their boss told them to come to work. What kind of human are you? One hurricane survivor told they marked over 100 possible bodies in a six mile stretch of the river. Imagine this here is the new edge of the river and you are missing family members and friends and you see that there are bodies in the trees and you are not able to reach them. And of course you have to know that they are at the moment not able to, to bring all the bodies together because the focus is on the people that are alive or hurt and need help. So when they call 911 and are telling here are bodies around my home I can't reach them. They tell you, we can't do anything. Imagine that. And so when you are asking why, why don't, why, why do they not have gone to safe areas? You have to remember that the roads was full of people full of vehicles and I saw videos from traffic jam over miles and imagine being in that situation that you packed all your important stuff your kids your whole family in the car and then you are on the road and there is no movement and you know the hurricane is coming you have no protection What I also saw is the massive amount of helping people. I saw videos with trucks full of hay, farmers helping farmers, trucks full with water, supplies, private persons that are trying to reach their country members. But I also heard rumors about people 
that want to help was forbidden to help because no one is allowed without state permission to help people in those area. Private pilots that try to reach out the areas which are complete away because there are no roads left. They try to reach them out with horses. I saw also a video of a Provi, Pro, Provi kayak man who is searching into the trees and the strong water if there are any persons that need help. But the people are asking why has the government forbidden us to help those people? Why are only state help organizations are able to help? Why we don't have the permission to help them? And of course also there are also rumors of weather manipulation. I have no idea if this is just a rumor or if it's fact. But you have to know that weather manipulation is already there. So I have no idea if they have done it in this area. But weather manipulation is something that you can use in war. And they will use it in war in future. They already use it in war. But I have no idea if this is just a rumor or that really weather manipulation has something to do with it. I saw a video from an eight-year-old boy that is searching with his father around the river for his also eight-year-old school friend. And they, they know that this girl is possibly dead and he's walking there and searching for the body of it. And of course there are a lot of rumors. People are saying that FEMA is stealing money. The government controls the weather and they are forcing people out of the region in order to mine its lithium. So, in every rumor, there is one small drop of truth. And I don't know what, if these rumors are true or not, because I'm too far away and I also don't have this information. But yeah, the people are searching for answers. They are trying to understand it. Why? Why does it happen? Why does it happen this way? And because of this, Rumors are completely normal because in situation, extreme situation like this, the people, the mind of the people is open for rumors. And we don't know, maybe some of them are true. I have no idea. People are also telling that the official media is announcing fake news. For example, in official media, um, they told everyone that only 92 persons are still missing. But I saw a file where are three areas found, found provided dead and still missing. And in this file there are 621 persons still missing. So this is a huge difference and I'm not sure what is fact and what not. But if this is true, that 621 persons are still missing and you see in the news only 92, I'm wondering why there is such a huge difference. So what's the reason for that? Are, are those 621 also fake news? I have no idea. So questions over questions. But what is fact that um, America announces a big amount of money to the Ukraine war. So this year is from September, Biden announces 8 billion in military aid for Ukraine. So, and then I, I saw a post from someone that it, he's writing that every fifth um, house owner in the Appalachians is so poor that he falls under the, the poor um, line 
the official poor line in America. And the government spent 75 billion for Ukraine. And imagine what would happen if they don't spend those 75 billion to Ukraine and they spend those money in the Appalachian, in the persons who live there. What a huge difference. Yeah, he is not really false because you have to know this, this money that is sent away. This is tax money. People are working for that. And now they see a lot of money is going in a war what has nothing to do directly with them. But if they are in such a specific situation and they lost everything, they don't get enough help to restart in life. Yeah, and of course also politicians use the situations because um, yeah, Trump and Kamala, every one of them want to win and so they fight against it and also the hurricane is a huge topic that they use now for their plans. Trump is saying that um, Kamala spent billions for house from illegal migrants. Yeah, and then you have to know there is um, those agonists, the FEMA. And FEMA has different force. One for the specific situations like the hurricane. And then there is another one for um, programs for migrants. And fact is that America um, spent 640 million, do million dollar for immigrants. The program is called Shelter and Services. So, and uh, they have to, they want to, to pay all the costs for the migrants in the communities. So 640 million dollar. So, and then when you pay taxes for your whole life and you lost everything and you will get not enough help and then you see migrants that doesn't do anything for the, the country where they are living in. So America, and they, they've got houses to live in and you lost your house and yeah now in fact you get 750 dollars so this feels like a joke so i really really hope that the government may enough um, charity programs and help programs and spend money for restart the life of this um, hurricane hurricane damaged people. I really hope that because this will make a huge difference in the uh, which one of them is going to be president, Kamala or Trump. To show you how much energy the water had and how angry the water was, I want to show you a video with before and after pictures. And when you can see that uh, the houses, whole villages are just swept away with nothing left. And also those massive rocks in the riverbank. You can imagine that $750 will bring you nothing because there are no construction markets, supermarkets, no possibility for buying supplies because there are no roads anymore. Maybe you will have something from the $750 later, but yet, no. Now you need something else. And while those people lost everything, lost their whole existence, Kamala is in Vegas for um, getting on her voting tour. But as hurricane victims were waiting for relief, Kamala was rallying supporters in Vegas. Six days after the lights went out and the floodwaters rose in Georgia, she did finally do a drop by. Federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750 for folks who need immediate needs being met, such as food, baby formula, and the like. Where are they when you really need them? So, There are videos with strings around trees and on, on some of them you saw smell, 
so that means that there is a body in the closer area. And imagine you have to identificate those persons as a family member. How bad they are looking after being in this water and after maybe hanging a tree for several days or weeks. I'm not sure if those politicians really understand what happened there. Because otherwise they would left everything and put their whole focus on helping those people. Or I am wrong. So, and hurricane season is still two months. I only can pray for those people that nothing like this will happen again. And I saw videos in Florida where they have massive floods and people are bringing all of their furniture out of their homes because they had to bring all those mud outside of their homes. And they lost everything, only the furniture is still there. So they lost all the pictures, papers, electronic stuff, everything. They only have their house and the furniture. And people are trying to steal that and are stealing that. So imagine you lost everything, you have only your roof over your head and a little bit of furniture and you put it outside to clean your house and then people are coming and are stealing that? That what is left? If I am in this situation, I would not watch people stealing my stuff. And this is why I'm always telling that protection and self-defense weapons are important when you think about prepping. Because in situations like this, the real character of people are coming out. So at one side, and I'm really glad that this is the bigger side, people are helping. People are driving hundreds of miles to bring supplies and food for the animals. And these are the good people that believe in God. And then at the other side, there are those people with black souls that are stealing something from families that lost clearly everything. Everything! Something similar also happened in Germany. We had uh, this area called Ahrtal. There was a massive flooding, something that we haven't here for a long time. People are not expecting that in this area. They got the warning way too late. And then the next day, people are there to steal stuff. And when I'm talking about prepping, people always think, oh no, the people aren't that bad, they are helping each other, nothing would happen, you don't need weapons. No, those people are wrong. In situations like this, bad people will always try to steal that what's left. So, my prayers are there for all the people in America that had to, had to, yeah, see what happened there. Lost everything, lost someone who they, who they love. Have all those pictures saved forever in their brains, those horrible, terrible pictures. I really from the bottom of my heart, I really play, pray for you. I pray for you that you will help each other and that your life start over. I know what it feels like to lose someone that you really love. I know it's not getting better. It's not getting better. You just, your life won't stop because of this. And I really pray for you that God bless you all and help you all through this, to this horrible situation. I hope you pray too.